The first modern airliner was introduced in 1933, but the popularity of air travel didn't really take off until the 1960s and 70s. The number of people flying long haul globally has increased to more than 3 billion each year, but the size of the seats inside some long haul aircraft hasn't changed for 50 years. 17 inch seats are commonplace in some aircraft, in fact some are as narrow as 16 inches. It's not good enough for modern day comfort and personal space. Now Airbus is calling on the rest of the industry to adopt modern standards. The call comes after the aircraft manufacturer commissioned independent research which showed that passenger sleep quality was improved by up to 50% in 18 inch seats compared to 17 inches. So the 17 inch seat is what we call the crusher seat. It's the seat that prevents you from movement. It prevents you from getting comfortable during that flight. Our industry is changing and the needs of passengers are changing as well. Passengers are flying more and they're flying on more longer haul flights as well. We're calling for an 18 inch minimum standard of comfort and it's something that we've always believed in. Other manufacturers are eroding comfort standards by going back to narrow seat widths in order to remain competitive. Passengers are increasingly discerning and more are making booking choices based on seat comfort. New research into long-haul economy passengers across international airports revealed that seat comfort is now the most important criteria when booking long-distance flights in economy, even over the schedule of the flight. But an extra inch or two would be helpful to uh, make it a little more comfortable. I look for an airplane company that provides bigger seats. It's quite expensive if you want to upgrade for, uh, for more room. It's just so uncomfortable. You can't sleep. Sort of about like that, maybe. So, I mean, it's just enough for me to sort of wedge myself in, and that is it, you are wedged in. When, when you get to your destination and you don't feel refreshed whatsoever. Critics claim that airlines have refused to take into account the increase in modern requirements for personal space and comfort. Other industries have adapted the size and width of their seats to take into account the growing population and demands for improved comfort. For example, cinema seats have increased to 22 inches, and when Wembley Stadium reopened, its seats were increased to over 19 inches, a full four inches wider than the seats in the old stadium. So this is the first uh, known scientific study that compares the width of two different seats uh, in economy class. The graph shows on the top line the number of disturbances to the brainwave pattern called the arousal index. On the bottom graph shows the different sleep stages that these participants went through during the course of the night. They have had continuous, almost continuous disturbances to their brain waves through the night. And in this graph, compared to the 17-inch seat, you can see there's hardly any disturbances in brainwave patterns, particularly in the first half of sleep where we have most of our deep sleep period. The different sleep stages that the participants go through mimic what we would find in a normal sleep in our own bed. If the aviation industry doesn't make a stand right now, we risk jeopardising passenger comfort into 2040 and beyond, which means that another generation is consigned to seats which are based on 1960s standards. We're encouraging all airlines to look at our research and consider increasing the size of their seats because as the research has shown, one inch makes all the difference.